Winter Picks Dinner is back. And we're taking it to the sky. Hey there, ma'am fam. It is time for another round of Winter Picks Dinner. This time, we're on the Skyliner Resorts. Winter Picks Dinner is the game where we have a multi-course meal, and each round is decided by a winner of a ferocious game of rock, paper, scissors. Ferocious. Mm -hmm. We haven't played in a while, and I have a terrible track record, but I have some favorites here on the Skyliner loop, and I'm hoping that, you know what, I get to pick at least one round. This is how the game works. We're gonna be having a five course meal. We'll be having drinks, appetizers, entrees, desserts, and more drinks. Before each course, we are gonna play a round of rock, paper, scissors. Whoever wins decides where we go for that round. In play today, we've got Disney's Boardwalk, Disney's Yacht Club, Disney's Beach Club, Riviera, Caribbean Beach, Art of Animation, and Pop Century, all the Disney-owned and operated resorts along the Skyliner route. And to make it a little extra fun, not only does that dining location get knocked out once it's been chosen, that whole resort does. Which means if you want to have drinks at the Cruise Cup and then also get appetizers at Ale and Compass at the Yacht Club, no can do's, Phil Baby Doll. So we've got to be very strategic with our decisions and let's get playing for the first round. First round, drinks. Yes. It's been a minute since we've done this. It has been. I need to stretch. You need to stretch. That just sounds like clapping. Okay. All right. Stretched out. I have a whole strategic plan that assumes I win every round and it falls apart very quickly if I start losing. So. I have a whole strategic plan that assumes I win every round. Yeah, I have I have my whole meal planned out. It just sounds like you've got a meal prepped. I really do, I got a whole thing prepped. Okay. Let's see if it falls apart. Are you ready? Yeah. You ready? Ready. Okay, sure? Yeah. All right. We go on shoot. We do. Rock, Rock paper, scissors, shoot. Things are working out so far. Okay, here's the thing. Drinks is first. Several of the lounges are not open yet because they don't open till four o'clock. So that would knock out my top choices for drinks, which are on the boardwalk or at the yacht club. So therefore, we probably have to go to either a pool bar or Riviera or Caribbean Beach. And I have my, I have things locked in for Caribbean Beach and Riviera on this devious plan of mine. So that means a pool bar. Therefore, we're going to the drop off, which is at Art of Animation, because I don't think anyone's gonna pick Art of Animation or Pop Century for any of the food items. And the pool bar menus are basically the same, regardless of where you go. And I would like to get a little bevy and walk around and look at the cute characters at Art of Animation. So we gotta hit the Skyliner. The Disney Skyliner is an incredible perk when staying on the Skyliner Loop Resorts. There are four stops that connect you amongst not only the resorts, but Epcot and Hollywood Studios as well. We are getting on board at the International Gateway Station, which is the backside of Epcot, and taking it after a stop to the Art of Animation Resort. I know the wrapped gondolas are worse than the regular gondolas for viewing, but what's one character you'd like to ride in the Skyliner today? Remy. Oh, the Remy one, it just went by, it's very cute. I would like the Toy Story one. I think it's the first time. Thank you. Now, one thing I will say, the wrapped gondolas are adorable, but they do provide a worse view when you're trying to look at the sights and sounds of the Skyliner or out the windows. Another thing I will point out is that right now it's not very busy, so they give us our own gondola, but these can seat up to 10. So if it's busy, like first thing in the morning or after park close, they will combine small parties together. So just keep that in mind. Additionally, strollers and wheelchairs can go on here, ECVs. Um, you don't have to collapse them or anything, and you can just take it right on the Skyliner. And off we go. After an ever so brief slowdown at the Riviera Resort Station where we elected to stay on the Skyliner, we are now here at the Caribbean Beach Resort Station, or better known as the Skyliner Hub. Here you can access Hollywood Studios, the Art of Animation Resort, or the Pop Century Resort, or where we just came from, which is the Riviera, and then Epcot. 
Also, I was reminded of just how big the Caribbean Resort is it's as we were go as we were soaring over the resort, Molly. It's it's, it's ginormous. It's it's a junk a new celebration, according to the lady on the Skyliner. Actually, she didn't say that. When, and she didn't talk leaving Epcot either, because normally she says, did you learn how to say hello in a new language today? And I'm wondering if people found her annoying and they turned her off. Huh. In any case, per Molly's selection, we are headed to the Art of Animation Resort so that we might pick up a beverage for round one. Heck yeah. I might have lost the round, but I'm on the Rimmy Skyliner. Look at us, just two people. <laughs> We have made it to our destination, ridden the entire length of the Skyliner, and now we are at Art of Animation. This is a value resort, as is Pop Century on the other side of this bridge right here, making them the first time value resorts at Walt Disney World have had transportation besides buses, which is a huge perk at staying at either one of these. We've done a whole staycation video at Pop Century if you wanna check that one out. It's actually my favorite as far as value and location and Skyliner perks. It's my favorite value resort at Walt Disney World, but I also have a big soft spot for Art of Animation. Art of Animation is very popular, especially with guests with young kids because of the over-the-top, larger-than-life characters and the very themed rooms. There are four sections of Art of Animation. There is Cars, Finding Nemo, The Lion King, and The Little Mermaid. And all the sections except for The Little Mermaid are actually six-person family suites. So often, if you've got a bigger group, you could get one room here versus two rooms somewhere else, which is really fun. And then again, you've got Little Mermaid, which are standard hotel rooms. I think this resort is so cute and so fun to walk around even if you're not staying here. Skyliner Crawl is a great first day activity uh, and I am excited to get a beverage and see some of the characters around here. Made it to the drop off which is the pool bar here at Art of Animation right outside of the big blue pool which is the huge pool here right in the Finding Nemo section. Fun fact there used to be underwater speakers in this pool that would play Disney music but too many kids were staying underwater for too long and having to get rescued by the lifeguards trying to hear the music so it doesn't do that anymore. Now like I said earlier, this is gonna have a pretty standard Disney pool bar menu. Most of the pool bars around Disney property have the same menu. You're gonna have your frozen beverages, your blueberry lemonade, your cucumber and mint fojito, your margaritas, your frozen Jack and Cokes. Pretty standard, uh, but again, I wanna walk around and look at some cute things while we're drinking. Drinks have been acquired and now we're headed to, in my opinion, the best section of the resort to walk around, the Lion King section. Ooh. Alan, what did you get? I got a Lagunitas IPA. That's just a really good IPA. Very crisp, pine notes, fall by citrus. You'd have to be an IPA fan to enjoy this, but as one, I find it delightful. And what about you, what'd you get? I got the classic Disney Frosé, which mm. is their frozen rosé. It's got Tito's vodka in it and Mayomi rosé. It's actually pretty good, not super duper sweet. It's my favorite kind of classic Disney frozen bevy. Cheers, and it feels good on this hot day. I'm gonna share it with Rafiki. Oh, he seems to be enjoying it. How do you think he gets so wise? I'm sorry, Are, is the implication there that frosé makes one wise? I don't think you can think of the things Rafiki does without help. Without exterior assistance. I see. I'm too scared to go any further than Scar as a giant sea witch lurks off in the distance. But we have to do a resort stay here. Uh, which section should we stay in? Cast your vote down in the comments. And, uh, but we did have to come say hello to three of my favorite Disney characters, Shenzi, Bonsai, and Ed, the hyenas, who are horribly represented in The Lion King, even though it's my favorite Disney animated feature film. Hyenas are much smarter than, and much better hunters than they appear in the film. But- oh, They're also not just scavengers. No, they have a better hunting record than lions. Uh, we could have whatever's lying around. Also, they're a matriarch, which is why it does make sense that Shenzi would be the leader of the gang. Make mine a cub sandwich, what you think? <laughs> so that part's true. Okay, so that is drink rounds in the books. Now, I don't think we're gonna pick Pop Century for appetizers. Fair. Or entrees. Or desserts. Or Pop Century. But or true. even the second round of drinks. That's pretty fair. So I propose we play our next round of Rock, Paper, Scissors in a different uh, locale. Okay, we are on round number two. That is appetizers. Ready? Yep. Let's do this. Come on, Land, don't fall apart now. Rock, Rock paper, paper, scissors. scissors. 
Oh, interesting. Okay, let's go again. Rock, Rock paper, scissors, shoot. Ha. It didn't work. I know where we're going. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Alan won appetizers. Are we staying here at Caribbean Beach? No. I guess we're getting on towards Epcot then. To International Gateway. Alan, where are we going? You said no to Riviera? Yes, I did. No to Caribbean Beach? Yes, I did. So, to be clear, I did think about Bar Riva. Uh, but to me, that feels like more of an entree or maybe an after this whole round, final round dessert spot than an app spot. The Riviera, you mean? The Riviera, yeah. Well, that was my plan. Well, I wanted a baked brie, but okay. Um, I think for me, when I think about a nice app, my mind immediately goes to the Yacht Club and Dale and Compass. Okay, I, I think that's a good choice. I accept. All right. The Yacht Club is a deluxe resort in the Epcot area loop, and it is incredibly popular along with its sister resort, the Beach Club, one, for its proximity to Epcot, and two, for its insane pool complex here, Stormalong Bay, which has a huge pirate ship water slide, sand bottom pool, and lazy river. Now, we've never done a staycation here, but I'm looking forward to doing it eventually. Now, Ale and Compass is actually made of three distinct parts. You have the Ale and Compass Lounge, which we are going to be visiting, the Ale and Compass Restaurant proper, and on the opposite side of the lobby here in Downaways, you have the Marketplace at Ale and Compass, which offers some quick service options. And if you do happen to be in the lobby of the Yacht Club and you want to take a closer look at this globe, there is a secret that you can find. Now, we are in search of it as we speak, and we'll be back to you shortly once we have refound it. If you look very closely for my not colorblind friends, you will find here, just below this sea creature, a Mickey. It's almost like it's a, a sticker, but I'm told that because it is a very similar color blue to the ocean, it's difficult to see. But because I'm colorblind and these types of things are just a touch easier for me to see, boop, there it is. Much like the rest of this resort, the Ale and Compass Lounge has some nautical theming to it in the decor. I really like the tile floor. Taking a look at the menu, they do have some good twists on classic cocktails like a maple old fashioned or a spicy pomegranate margarita, but we were here for food. They have a variety of upscale bar bites, including a Heath oven flatbreads and roasted garlic shrimp. We went for the famous Parker House Rolls and Spreads and the Roasted Buffalo Style Cauliflower. The Parker House Rolls and Spreads are a delicious collection of buttery rolls and then accompanied by bacon jam, house-made pub cheese, and citrus butter. These spreads are divine. I love the orange zest in the citrus butter, and the pub cheese reminds me of the kind of nostalgic kind in a tub that I used to eat growing up, except for this one is clearly homemade, pairs perfectly with that sweet and savory bacon jam. These are a must-get. And I wanted to try the roasted buffalo style cauliflower with hearts of romaine and herbed ranch. Now, our server did mention that it had blue cheese. So if you are not a fan of blue cheese, maybe ask that it not be added to this particular dish because it was there and it was in full force. I thought the dish was cooked really well. The cauliflower itself was still crispy. It wasn't overly cooked and chewy. A lot of great buffalo flavor. Like I mentioned before, some really strong blue cheese. This was pretty enjoyable. I would certainly order this one again. All right, that was a delicious round of appetizers. Love those rolls. They're so good. And the buffalo cauliflower. Really enjoyed that too. Okay, we have entrees next. Entrees next. My plan has been thrown awry, but I think I can correct it here. If I would. Was it? No, I loved it. Don't get me wrong, those delicious. I understand. But you ready? Yes. Let's roll. Rock, paper, scissors, scissors shoot. shoot. Oh, interesting. Ready? Rock, Rock paper, scissors, scissors, shoot. Wow, that's wild. That's wild, really. Yep. yep. Rock, Rock, paper, scissors, scissors shoot. shoot. Bonk. I'm going to choose entrees. <laughs> I thought maybe that because you're both doing rock so uh -huh. much, you th would do I'd throw paper. paper to beat the rock? Yeah. Uh-huh. So I... You threw scissors to beat the paper. Yeah. I understand. I understand. Okay, so let's talk options. We could just walk right across the way here and go to the boardwalk, have boardwalk deli or the pizza window. Both of those are pretty tasty. We could also go to Caribbean Beach. Centertown Market surprised us, as did Banana Cabana. Yacht Club is eliminated. Bummer. No, we're going to the Riviera. Primo Piatto. Shh, don't tell Alan, but that's where I, I wanted to go. I 
was gonna switch Yacht Club and Riviera in my head, in my order, but that is, was on my list, so I'm okay with this. Don't let Alan know. Beautiful day. Yeah, I was just observing. Made it to the beautiful Riviera Resort, one of my favorites on property. And we are headed to get entrees at Primo Piatto, which is the quick service restaurant here. It's loud in here because the wind and the fountain, but my favorite detail here at Riviera are these gorgeous over the top murals here. There's a Peter Pan one and a Tangled one. They are so stunning. Thousands and thousands of pieces of tile, hundreds of different colors, including real gold. Oh, they are just, absolutely beautiful and this is why i feel like if you are on a check-in day or a check-out day or you're taking a day off from being in the parks resort hopping can be so much fun because you know to hop around some resorts maybe you're not staying at them grab some drinks and eats along the way i think a lot of people know about a monorail crawl which is at the monorail resorts but a skyliner crawl is very fun as well Riviera is themed to the French and Italian Rivieras, and because of that, they are one of the best foodie resorts in my opinion. There's a lot of bread, there's a lot of pasta, there's a lot of cheese. You've got Bar Riva here, which I think is the best pool bar in Walt Disney World, because they've got a very unique menu, that standard drink menu, you're not gonna see that there. They've got Primo Piatto, which is where we're headed, which is a very good quick service restaurant that has everything from Coke Monster sandwiches to a tuna niçoise salad. You've got the coffee shop upstairs that also does cocktails and charcuterie in the evenings, and then up on the top floor you've got Topolino's Terrace which in the mornings is I think the best character meal on property and in the evenings a signature French and Italian restaurant so if you love eating definitely come visit Riviera there is some goodness to be had. Primo Piatto features a wide variety of items available from salads and soup to their signature sandwiches as well as some elevated entrees. I don't know what it is about this spot it just feels fancier than a standard quick service restaurant. The more I think about it, it's honestly probably the fact that they use, you know, real plates and the decor. One of the things that I like the most about Primo Piatto is that the decorations on this back wall here are all just Walt and his family traveling throughout the Riviera. And it's, I don't know, there's just something about having this really personal touch with Walt Disney and his family here that makes this place feel special. Also, if you listen to the music here and take note of it, they play Disney songs, but they're all going to be in French or Italian. Now, I don't want to toot our horn here too much, but I think we might have created the ultimate grilled cheese and tomato soup combination. We picked up the Croque Monsieur that has just so much melty cheese on top, and of course, fries on the side, and the soup of the day, the soup du jour, as it were. Mm, that sounds good. <laughs> that's, that's a niche joke for a couple of you out there. We picked up tomato basil soup now. We're gonna be obviously dipping the sandwich into the soup. It's going to be delicious. Oh, we also picked up the garlic aioli because our lovely food runner, who is also coincidentally named Molly and was here the last time we were doing the Riviera Staycation, remembered this Molly. I said, hi, I don't know if you remember us, but we have the same name. And she goes, yeah, do you want garlic aioli again this time? So. So uh, cast members are treasures and I'm honored to be remembered as someone who wants to eat aioli. <laughs> Look at this though. Oh my god, this sandwich. Look at that. Look at that sandwich. And here we go. It's perfection. The sandwich itself is really incredibly rich, which is why we're sharing it. You've got these big pieces of brioche bread here, tons of that salty ham, cheese on top, and then a bechamel sauce, which is that eggy, creamy sauce. So it is simple deliciousness, which is my favorite kind of food. Then you're gonna pair it with this beautiful, naturally sweet tomato bisque that's rich and creamy, but somehow still light. And it is a perfect flavor combination. Obviously everyone knows grilled cheese and tomato soup are a match made in heaven, but this is like a little bit more elevated and chef's kiss. Also the Parmesan fries and the garlic aioli. This is just delightful. And even though we, I lost this round, I, I do feel like I won. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna have some now. <laughs> 
Yeah, because I actually won. <laughs> that was delicious. Yeah, best best course so far. <sighs> okay, I have I have an idea for dessert. I'm gonna channel it through my brain into my hand. Victory. Don't screw this up for us. <clears throat> you got it? Oh, I got it. You ready? I'm ready. It's gonna be great. Uh-huh. Alright. Shall we? Yep. For dessert. Rock, paper, paper scissors. scissors. Shoot. Boop. <laughs> My bread pudding dreams. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's funny how funny you think it is. Just, 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 whoo. You let me down though. Why I oughta. <laughs> I hope that's not at me. No, it's to my fist. <laughs> nope, don't say that out loud. I'll punch it with this one. Like. Now, as Molly mentioned, bread pudding is an option at Banana Cabana over at Caribbean Beach. But I'm feeling ice cream. And we have two options for that. Either one, the ice cream shop on the boardwalk, or where I think I wanna go, which is the walk-up counter at Beaches and Cream. Back to the Skyliner. We fly! We have asked. Wow, feels like we were just here, you know? The Beach Club is a deluxe resort in the Epcot Loop, and its sister resort is the Yacht Club. <laughs> it features all the same amenities that I mentioned previously that the Yacht Club has, but the Beach Club has beaches and cream. Now, technically, beaches and cream sits between the Yacht and Beach Club, but if you were to book it through Disney, it would say you're booking it at the Beach Club. So it sits with the Beach Club. Now, Beaches and Cream is an old-fashioned diner that actually is a sit-down restaurant. It is most well known, for, however, for the kitchen sink, which is a absolutely massive ice cream dish. It has eight scoops of ice cream, all of the toppings, and a whole can of whipped cream. A whole can! Yep, a whole can. Frankly, even if you are lactose tolerant, this might put you to the test. In addition to that, they also have a walk-up window where you can get smaller ice cream sundaes and milkshakes to go, and that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so we asked them to make a smaller version of the No Way Jose. This is vanilla ice cream with hot fudge and peanut butter on top, along with whipped cream with chocolate and peanut butter chips and a cherry. Your weapon, please. Hold on, everybody, we just, we have to do the quick, you know, Two, one. Oh, yeah. This feels yeah. like a lot. Cheers. The peanut Sorry. butter sauce is yeah. my favorite. It has a really good classic vanilla ice cream. Super rich peanut butter sauce. I like that it's not overwhelmingly chocolate. It's like a Reese's cup in yeah. ice cream sundae form. 100%. I think if you do a chocolate ice cream, it might be overwhelming because it's almost too sweet now. Chocolate ice cream might push it over the edge for me. This is, this is delightful. Now, no, the customer did warn us they charge by the toppings, so this is expensive to get all the toppings that you might want on a sundae. But if you do want any of the signature sundaes that they have, besides the kitchen sink, obviously, at the window, just ask and they can make you a smaller version of it. And if you want the kitchen sink, they have mini's kitchen sink out there right now. Mm. It's a baby. That was very tasty and a lot of dairy. Back to where it all started. We are playing our final game right here in the same spot. Yep. Okay. Last round of drinks, everybody. On shoot. Mm -hmm. Rock, okay. paper, scissors, shoot. And you take the last round of drinks. Me? You. What an honor. Well, there's not a ton of spots left. We have Pop Century which is the pool bar, would be basically the same thing as going to Art of Animation. There is Caribbean Beach where we could go to Banana Cabana, which is the very fun 
poolside restaurant, but we are headed across the way here to the boardwalk because there's a very cool, very fun themed bar here that has some of my favorite Easter eggs and very delicious cocktails to Abracadab bar. <laughs> Abracadabra. Abra oh, hold on, hold on. Just no, real quick. We're, just, we're gonna do a take, we're gonna do a take two. To Abracadab bar. Nailed it. High five. Buddy out of the hat. I just, okay. Making our way onto Disney's Boardwalk, which is a 20s style New Jersey boardwalk themed to Atlantic City. Now the boardwalk is not only the Boardwalk Inn where you can stay, it's a deluxe resort in the Epcot area, but you've also got again the boardwalk area right here, which has a variety of dining, shopping, and nightlife. A couple of my favorites include Jelly Rolls, which is the dueling piano bar. I've been known to turn up a night or two at the Atlantic Dance Hall as well. You've got the deli, an ice cream shop. You've got Flying Fish, a signature seafood restaurant. You've got some newer things coming in here as well. And where we're headed, Abracadab Bar. Alan, do you see who the proprietor of the deli is? It's, it's a funny joke. Tell me about it. It's Huge Croissant, uh -huh. but his name is Hugh G. Croissant, uh -huh. spelled differently, but together it's Huge Croissant, which is a pastry. And it's funny because it's a bakery. Thank you. Jokes are funnier when you explain them. Yep, that's what people tell me. We've made it to the Abra Kadab Bar, which is themed to being a magician's lounge. Not like a birthday party magician. I mean like Houdini and back when magicians were sexy. Go on. <laughs> no, 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 tell me more. No, that's it. Oh, you're good, zero context. <laughs> He got the mustache, you know. It was like it was like more of a. It was. You got the mustache. It's like you know, not like a cheesy birthday tradition. I mean, like mysterious and like, oh, how do they do that? And like, oh, he's drinking a cocktail and elixir. Anyway. <laughs> Habricadab Bar is incredibly well themed when you go inside, fitting not only the kind of 20s boardwalk theme, but also the magician's theme. Again, tons of fun Easter eggs in here. We'll point some of them out to you and uh, inside and grab an enchanting elixir or a curious concoction as the sign promises. From a sexy magician. <laughs> From a sexy <laughs> magician. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Welcome in, folks. Again, one of my favorite lounges on property. Honestly, haven't been here in forever, and I'm regretting that, so I'm happy we're here now. A couple of cool things to look for. One, you've got these posters all around the room featuring different magicians, but watch them because perhaps they are a little magic of their own. Now, the story of Abracadabra is that some of these famous magicians have gone missing and that their famous hideout has been revealed, and that's where you are in here. So you're going to see all kinds of magicians' tricks around the bar as well. Like if you look up here, you've got cards, you've got hoop, you've got all of kind of the tools that a magician would need. And you're even going to see it in the wallpaper. So you've got the hoops right here. You've got a carrot and a bunny to pop out of your top hat. You've got rope. You've got the different suits of cards. You've got lock and keys right here. You've got top hats and under there, the magic wand. My favorite Easter eggs though, if you look on the shelf back here with all these different magical trinkets, you're going to see magic wands. You're going to see bunnies. You're going to see cards, but you're also going to see a couple of very iconic magic potions. For starters, on the middle section right there, second shelf down, there's Magic Gumbo, which I believe to be Mama Odie's. But my all-time favorite, if you go on the right-hand section right here, top shelf, you're gonna see two bottles that are extract of llama. He's supposed to be dead. You know, in my defense, your poisons all look alike. You might think about relabeling some of them. The Abracadab Bar really is a delight. The interior is one of the most well-themed bars that I've been in on Disney property. It's just so beautiful. And the food and drink are also quite nice. They do have a selection of bar snacks like Chips and Dip Trio and the Tuna Tataki. But what we're here for are the handcrafted cocktails. Now they do have a full bar as observed right up there. So if you want to make something off menu that is available and it looks stacked, but what they do have here are handcrafted and featured cocktails. Things like the Coney Negroni, the Conjurita, the Parlick Trip, and the Pepper's Ghost. Really, a bunch of aptly named magical cocktails that might trick your senses. <laughs> anyway, they also have some featured cocktails like the Aperol Spritz, the Bourbon Mule, and the Sidecar. More of these standard cocktails that you'd find at most of these types of speakeasy bars. Now our drinks have arrived. I have gotten the Sazerac and... I think you mean they appeared. You're right. Hold on. Let me, let me do it again. 
our drinks have magically appeared. And I have summoned forth the Sazerac while Molly has conjured the Black Manhattan. Now my Sazerac comes with Hudson Manhattan rye whiskey, absinthe, simple syrup, Peshawd's bitters, and Angostura bitters. I will let you know that I did ask the bartender to go light on the simple syrup for me with this one. It's so tilted. There we go. <laughs> Cheers to the invisible person holding this because Molly's right there. Oh, they did go light on the simple syrup. Sazerax, because of the absinthe inclusion, tastes really strongly of licorice. So if you do not like licorice or like star anise flavor, this probably isn't gonna be for you. Right after that comes the bourbon. It's really, really nice and rich. I love a good Sazerac, and this is a very good Sazerac. All that followed up with some nice citrus flavors. This is an easy sipping beverage. And here's that Black Manhattan. It's made with Bullet Rye Whiskey, Amaro Averna, Orange Bitters, and Angostura Bitters. Now, I'm normally more of an old-fashioned girly, and I'm sure they could make me one, but it was not one of the specialty drinks, and I'm here to try a specialty concoction. Ooh, she is a stiff drink, but I like it. Now, I wasn't sure what Amaro Avena was, but we looked it up, and it's like an Italian aperitif liqueur that goes in. It's very good. It's definitely bitter. You can certainly taste the rye whiskey. This is not an entry level like bourbon drink. Like if you've never had an old fashioned, this is not the one I would start with, but it's very good. It's stiff. It's a good sip and drink and I'm enjoying it in this magical atmosphere. And now I'm going to magically make it disappear. Okay, another cool Easter egg to look for. Our server, Sarah, who's fabulous, just told us to watch the pictures on the 13th of the hour because in the story, the magicians all disappeared on November 13th. So they're all gonna disappear at the same time on the 13th of every hour. And that brings us to an end of another episode of Winter Picks Dinner. I lost again. Well, technically that's true. Yeah, but you know what? It was still fun flying through Walt Disney World, literally. Boy, and, did we. And trying a bunch of tasty eats and drinks. What was your favorite round? For me, it was the Riviera. The Croque Monsieur and the Tomato basil soup. Mm. Killer combo. An excellent choice. What about I'm, you? I'm gonna say Abracadab bar huh? uh, because I love the theming in there. I love yeah. the, some of those Easter eggs nice. and it was a great cocktail. Well, we got to soar through the skies today. Yes. Quite frequently. Yes. And let us know where we should play next. We can go back to some of the parks we've been to before. There's a couple parks we haven't done it yet. Uh, let us know down in the comments. But until next time, friends, be sure to like this video. Subscribe if you are new. Follow us on all of our socials. And if you want to join with the man fam in the conversation about this or any other video, please join us on Discord. Links for all that are down below. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly. And I'm Alan. And it's been so magical. It has been. Good night. Night.